we had 300 students in the class. Can you believe that? 300 students. And so the guy said, I passed out, the teacher said, I passed out a sheet of paper. Every one of you who want to give a speech, say yes. And then everybody who doesn't want to give a speech, say no. I put no, circled it, exclamation marks. Do y'all know what the teacher did? He took everyone who said no. I was in shock. I could not believe it. And, and uh, so I was just like, uh, but anyway, in speech class, you know, the truth of it is you're, you're really supposed to have fun in speech class. It doesn't have to be spiritual all the time. And so I knew I had to give one, and I'm looking at Kim, and I'm going, ah, I don't want to give this speech. And then and all of them were sharing. Everybody was sharing their testimony. And so I told Kim, I said, well, you know, in college we did have a little fun with it. I said, so I'm going to do a speech on our, our St. Bernard his name was Isaiah. So I did a speech on the advantages and disadvantages of owning a St. Bernard. And do y'all know I got a standing ovation on that, <laughs> on that speech? And nobody forgot it. And Isaiah would, pro I talked about how Isaiah prophesied at night and how he did all kind of things. Oh, he was a funny dog. Anyway, I don't know why I said all that, but it's to this right here that there are moments in your life that you fear saying something to someone about Jesus. And all of a sudden you feel this stir and you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And let me tell you what the Holy Spirit is doing. He wants to move you to a new level. Once you do that, you release a boldness and a power in your life. So there are times when, yes, the, those who are up there who are so, I'm everything. Oh, my gosh, the conversation has to be about me. Oh, enough about you. What about me? What do you think of me? I mean, that's the way some people are. They need to be, be brought down. Peter needed to come down. But there's others that have to be lifted up. Our personality, God gave us. You can't change that. But what you can do is submit that to the Holy Spirit. And let, you know you're valuable. The world needs you. God needs you. God made you exactly who you are. That is to be celebrated. And you know, you have something that someone else needs that only you can speak into their life. Man, I'm just telling you, God can use you where you're at. And so the Lord took me as an introvert and put me in front of people. And uh, I'm, I mean, like, gosh, that got, you talking about getting out of your comfort zone. Uh, anybody ever had to get out of your comfort zone? Yeah, that's, and the Lord's going to do that. The Lord's going to do that. Same thing, I talked about the eagle. The eagle, when uh, a few Sundays ago, when the eagle goes into the nest, the, 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 they mate for life, and then there will be two eaglets, always two e eaglets, and the eggs are there, and the kids come out. The mother will take the downy and pluck it and put it all over the nest. And when those kids are born, the father will hunt 18 hours a day to feed those kids. Isn't that amazing? 18 hours. So the mother's got them all in this downs comforter, and dad's bringing them up maybe a golf ball or a tin can to play with. Life is good. Everything's cool. And then all of a sudden one day, the mother wakes up, and she's got a crazy look in her eye. <laughs> and she takes those big wings. And you know, an imperial eagle, the nest, can weigh two tons. It's it's unbelievable how big the nest is where the eagle is concerned. And God calls us eagles. You have to see this in the way God does us. And the mother does this right here, starts flapping her wings, and all that downy, 
goes flying out of the nest. And you know what happens? The sticks in there start pricking the backside of those little eaglets. Everywhere they sit, they're getting stuck. Why does she do that? Because she's going to teach them how to start putting the strength into their legs because they're not going to walk around and let one of those pricks stick them in the backside. But after a while, they get calluses on the backside. And so it's not as good, but it's not so bad. And then what happens, everything's fine, and all of a sudden one day, Mom shows up in the nest. she got that crazy look in her eyes. And she takes one of those kids and she starts moving it to the edge of, uh, edge of the cliff. Uh, an imperial eagle, which is found in the Middle East, they can go, their nest can go up to 10,000 feet. Unbelievable how, f- how far they will build those nests. And then all of a sudden, the, you got these two little eaglets. Can you imagine? And the mother starting to push one of them, and he's thinking, oh, my God, what's she about to do? And then she just goes, and throws that kid doesn't even get the kid ready or prepared for this just throws him out of the nest well he's fighting like crazy and all this the male eagle imperial can do 250 miles an hour in a nosedive and here comes the dad catches the little eaglet the scripture that he bears us up on eagle's wings He catches that little eaglet, brings it back to the nest. I've always laughed. I bet the eaglet, when he hits the nest, looks at his brother and says, now it's your turn. (laughs) And they go out of the nest until, guess what happens? They get confident their dad's never going to let them fall. Can I say this to everybody in here? When the Holy Spirit begins to move you out of your comfort zone. And I'm saying this for somebody in here today. He will never let you fall. You will never fall. And eventually what happens is the eagle, little eaglet, stretches his wings. And the minute the current hits those wings... And he's watched his dad do it. He begins, you know, they don't flap like a sparrow. An eagle never flaps like a sparrow. You know what it does? It rides the currents. It always goes head straight into the currents. Once that eaglet is flying on its own, it, the mother refuses to let it back in the nest. It's on its own. And that is a clear picture of what God wants to do in our lives. You know, the Lord wants to release your gift and your calling. And he wants to bring us all like you've got. Peter was, he was bold, blunt, and broken. That's where he got in his life. Do you know that he addresses himself? And it's so beautiful. In 2 Peter verse 1, he says, uh, Peter, a servant of Jesus Christ. The word servant in the Greek means love slave. Is that not good? Peter, a love slave of Jesus Christ. What had happened? Man, for I mean that boldness and that bluntness. You know what he did? He came in contact with the Holy Spirit. And everything began to change in his life. He was no longer fighting with the other apostles. He was no longer. And what happened? The the Bible says this about Moses, the greatest leader that ever lived. And you you know what his characteristic was? That he was the meekest man that ever lived. And a meekness is a total trust in God. You can love me, and it's going to be a blessing, but you can hate me, but you cannot hurt me. And that is what the Holy Spirit does. So, look, guys, what that means is let's let go of everything 
God intends for us to fly, his, his, especially in these last days. He has something for us to do. He wants to bring us into a new relationship with him and in that, release you out of your comfort zone. You can go from bold to blunt to broken, and then you can go from broken up to being a little more confident of yourself into a spirit of boldness. Hallelujah. Man, that's, that's, just, because, that's just what Jesus does. Uh, this is the world we live in. God loves us, and he wants us all. It all comes as we're growing up spiritually. So this is really what I'm calling this, and it's all based out of 2 Peter 1, uh, verse 1 through 15. I'm not going to take the time to read it, but I want us to look for what time we have left here for just a few minutes. I want you to look at a scripture that Peter says here in verse number 3, and it's a revelation that Gosh, we, we need this revelation in order to see all of God manifest in our life. Second Peter verse, chapter 1, verse 3, everything we could ever need for life and godliness has already been deposited in us by his divine power. Wow. For all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him, knowing Jesus, who has called us by his name and invited us it to come uh, through a glorious manifestation of his goodness. We're to come to him. Verse number four, as a result of this, he has given us magnificent promises that are beyond all price. So that through the power of these tremendous promises, we can experience partnership with the divine nature by which you have escaped the corrupt desires that are in this world. And I'm going to go back to, and that is so important. The whole Second Peter, if you'll grab it out of the Passion Translation, I just really encourage you to read the book of Second Peter because everything Peter is saying, the reason why Peter is so emphatic about teaching what he's teaching is because it also says in there that he knows that his time of departure is at hand. So this was his last letter to the churches. This is an, an incredible man of God, an incredible apostle of God, and he's given us, it's like you're on your deathbed, and the last things you say is to be everything you want to pour into your children. When my mother passed away on a, uh, uh, she passed away, I believe, on a Friday, was that correct, Randy? Saturday. On the Wednesday before my mother passed away, she was, all of us were in her bedroom all day long. And she was an incredible godly woman, and she prayed us all into the kingdom. But she lay on the bed on that Wednesday, and you know what she did? She talked to us, she talked to all the grandkids, and I mean, she just looked at them and said, I love you, and I want you guys to remember this. And I mean, she was pouring out every ounce of wisdom that she had in love into us. These were her last words on earth. And she told us how much she loved us and how proud she was of us. And, and, the, and the grandkids were all in. We sang worship songs. We sang hymns and all day that Wednesday before she goes into a coma. And that was really the last. I think she came out for just a few minutes uh, on, on Friday, I believe it was. And, uh, but that was it, man. So a person, when they're, when they're about to die, they are pouring their soul out. And this is exactly what Peter did. Peter was pouring his soul out to the churches at the time and so he gives this he says man everything everything 
I want you guys. He said, look, everything that we could ever need for life. And the beautiful part about, go ahead and, and go to that next scripture. I have it back up there. Yeah, everything that we could ever need for life. The word life in the, in the Greek literally is this life. The word actually is your time of life. Everything on this earth of your time of life is already deposited on the inside of you. Wow. Man, that's, that's in me. So how do, how, do we, how do we get this revelation in us? Let me give you a few points here. The first one here. To grow, you must understand that you are a spirit, a soul, and a body. Look here at uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Now may the God of peace and harmony set you apart, making you completely holy. And may your entire being, spirit, soul and body be kept completely flawless into the appearing of our Lord Jesus and the anointed one I want to make a statement I think in your spiritual walk and until you can understand that you are a spirit you have a soul you say okay pastor Terry what is the soul well that's your personality that's your emotions uh, I describe it, I will, I feel, I think. My soul is my will. I will, I feel. It is my emotions. And then it is my thought process. That is the soul. When you get born again, what part of you gets born again? The spirit. So the spirit gets born again. Did you know once you get born again and you receive Jesus as your Lord, you're still the same person? Now, you have been definitely touched and ministered to, but your soul is still you. God didn't, God didn't save you and then give you a whole new personality. He didn't. You wake up and you're the same person. That's because your spirit is connected with God and God comes inside your spirit. Do you know that you will never die? None of us. We're never going to die. This, we, as you go to the, the they, astronauts went to the moon, they wear a moon suit. What you're wearing right here is your earth suit. And you have a soul, which is your emotions, your mind, your makeup. But on the inside of every one of you, I want you to know something. Wow. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Now, I'm, I'm going to, uh, what time is it? This will take five minutes. It'll take five minutes, and I'm going to show you a, a quick video on spirit, soul, and body. How many of you know Andrew Womack? All right. One of the best teachers on spirit, soul, and body that there is. This is a kind of a cartoon thing that he did. It's only five minutes long. Mark, bring the lights down real quick before we click that. Sarah, you got that? You about ready to go? All right. I want you to watch this. I want you to listen to how he describes spirit, soul, and body. Go. Uh, spirit, soul, and body, which may not sound the most exciting thing to you on the surface, but to me, this is one of the most exciting things that the Lord has ever shown me. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that is so obvious we are made up of a spirit, soul, and body. And the body is very obvious. 
If you go look in a mirror, that's the part that you see. Now, you would be speaking to my soul, which is my mental, emotional part. Some people define soul as your mind, will, and emotions, and I think that that certainly is true. I don't think that it's all-inclusive. There's more to it. I believe that your conscience is a part of your soul. Your soul certainly includes your mental, emotional part. Uh, I believe it's what most people call their personality. If I was to touch your physical body, you can feel that. But I can also touch you by words, and it can touch your emotions. It can either make you glad or sad. It can make you angry. Uh, you can say words and hurt a person. So the body and the soul are two areas that every one of us are in touch with constantly. But the spirit part of us is a totally different matter. Jesus said this in John chapter 3 when he says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And there is no direct connection between the two. You cannot in a physical, natural way feel your spirit. The spirit cannot be accessed in any natural way, and herein lies one of the great problems in the Christian life. The Spirit is the part of us that God communicates with. And the Spirit is the part of us that all of the life and the power of God flows through. In James chapter 2, verse 26, the scripture there says, As the body without the Spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. And that just makes it very clear that the life-giving part of you is the Spirit. One of the greatest keys to walking with the Lord for me has been to understand this reality of spirit, soul, and body that the spirit realm cannot be seen or felt. The only way to discern what is spiritual truth is through the Bible, to just take it and believe it. Jesus said this in John chapter 6, verse 63. He says, the flesh profits nothing. It's the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are alive. It's revealing to us spiritual reality. And if you want to know what your spirit is like, then you have to go to God's word to find it out. You can't just go by an emotion, by some type of of perception. You have to go to God's Word. Here's another passage of Scripture in James chapter 1 and in verse 23 it says, For if any be a hearer of the Word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. This is talking about a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty talking about God's word, specifically the revelation of the gospel, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. This passage of scripture is likening the Bible unto a mirror that you look in to see your spiritual face, to see what you are in the spirit. You, with your eyes, have never looked directly into your face. You've always looked at a reflection or a representation but you've gotten to where you trust that. Well, the Word of God is a perfect reflection of what spiritual truth is. You can't sit there and say, well, I think that, you know, all my mascara is on and that my face is fixed, my hair is combed, and I'm ready to go. You can't go by how you feel. You have to go look in that mirror, and then you trust what you see. Well, it's the same thing with the Word of God. The Word of God gives you a perfect picture of who you are in your spirit. And it's the only way. Amen. Now, this is the scripture, and I, and I really want us to uh, a examine this. What he said about a hearer. And here it is in James chapter 1. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, the man is observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes his way, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. But he who looks into the perfect law of li liberty and continues in it. Everybody say continues in it. 
in it and is not a forgetful hearer, the one will be blessed in what he does. As we look into the mirror, when I got dressed this morning, I got, I went in there and I, of course, I always, Kim's my mirror. Okay, how do I look? And uh, she, she always gives me a good comment. But then before I walk out here, we have a big mirror in that office. So I always make sure I look uh, presentable and, and, that's that's the physical part of me uh i was a whole lot better looking in my 20s but our body you know changes so we we we're not the same i'm not the same as i was in my 20s i've totally completely changed my hair's gotten gray i i could no longer uh your your son what's his first name Where's he at? Oh, yeah, I told him this morning, don't y'all just love his hair? I mean, he's got the, the coolest hair. I was like, look how long that hair is. I'm so envious because I, I loved long hair when I was young. But we've changed. Our physical appearance changed. But I want everybody to hear me. Your spirit never changes. When you got born again, you did not get a baby Holy Ghost you got the Holy Spirit in you. That is the real you. So for me to discover my physical appearance, all I have to do is look in the mirror. And so what James is doing is telling us, if we are going to look into who our spirit is, guys, here's the mirror. It is the Word of God that you continue to hear and you discover who you really are do you know something our souls can be so damaged and we all know that we all and i want everybody to know uh, everybody in here has a little dysfunction in you i know that may come as a shock you know to some of us but we're all dysfunctional i love what kim's aunt said one time she said i tell you our family is like good beautiful uh christmas fudge the only problem is we got a few nuts in there (laughs) so you know we're all dysfunctional we're not perfect but can i tell you something your spirit is perfect because it's one in christ so i want to make this statement here looking into a mirror reveals what your body looks like the outward you Looking into the Word of God through reading and meditation, you will discover the spirit man who is the real you. You know, when I allow my soul to talk out of whatever hurt, whatever damage that I've gone through, and I am talking about myself. I tell you, I've been so mistreated. I am nothing. I ha- I'm just, I can't accomplish anything. I want everybody to hear me. You know that's a lie. That's an absolute lie. That is not the truth. Well, this is the way I feel. If we're going to go by the way we feel, I'm really blessed you showed up today. You know, it's, it's like the guy in the, <laughs> always reminds me of this. The, the mother goes to this, no, the wife goes to her, her husband and he's under the sheets and under the covers and she goes, it's Sunday morning, we're going to church. He goes, I'm not going to church. Yes, you are, you're going to church. He's, I'm not going to church. They don't like me down there. They talk about, about me down there. So I'm not going. He said, give me one good reason I have to go. She said, you're the pastor. (laughs) So, (laughs) you know, I just love Sarah. Sarah's the greatest. Thanks, Sarah. (laughs) You know, she loves me when no one else does. Amen. All right. Here's what I want everybody to see. Do y'all, do you realize I said something years ago in studying psychology and all, 
I said, there will come a day, and it's not the physical sickness of people that need healing. It'll be the souls of people that will need, need healing because there's so much junk in this world and the way our parents raised us. Some had a mom and dad. Majority, you know, majority of the people now only had a mother or a dad. They're single parent. Uh, there can be abuse. There can be all kinds of things happening in our life. But I want to say this to you. I had a counselor say this to me one day, and I wrote it down, and I preached on this, and you guys have heard me say this. Most powerful statement. All, all of the amount of regret will never change your past. All the amount of anxiety will never change your future. But any amount of gratitude will change your present. Pastor Terry, I don't have anything to be thankful for. Can I say why you feel that way? It's because you're looking from your soul to your body and your experiences. Why don't you take the soul, and this is where we grow, is that we begin to look into the mirror of the Word of God and what God says about you. Man. He, he, you know, he said, do you know the Bible says that he dances around us with joy? Man, I'm going to tell you, the Father's going to come off his throne when we get there, and I mean, we're going to dance together. Remember how your little children, I used to take my little girls and their little feet would be on mine, and we would dance around, and oh, they would just laugh can you see how much the Father loves you? And here is the key in life. Is to deal what the soul, what your experience and your past. Everybody, I love you, but that's not truth. But the Bible is truth. And when we yield to the Word of God, now it's going to take some time to get a lot of that thinking out. That is why it is so important. Jesus said, John 6, 63, and Andrew Womack brought it up, my words are spirit and my words are life. The more we speak out of the Word of God, who we are in Christ when I, my emotions feel like you have blown it, you are nothing, your life and ministry is over, I can turn from there and I can yield. I have the choice. I can yield to that or I can yield to the Word of God and I can go from guilt, depression, and all that and I can shift my soul to the Word of God and the Bible says, and everything give thanks. This is the will of God. So no matter what I may be feeling, I don't go by what I feel. I go by what the Word says about me. That is the difference in understanding the spirit, soul, and body. Well, Pastor Terry, I don't know who my, my parents even are. Oh, man, you have a father. You are not an orphan. You have a father God, even though you may never know your parents, your natural parents, but everybody, know, everybody look at this. There is a time limit on our natural physical part. There's a day of birth. There's a day of death. So there's a time limit on it. But there's no time limit on who you really are. Man. The, the, here, it, here really is the big question. And I'll, I'll close this off here. Here's the big question. How do I get what is on the inside of me, who I really am? How do I get that from here out in the physical? How do I see the manifestation of what is in the Word? How do I get it from 
here that's in me everything's in me how do i get what's in me out listen to listen to verse four of second peter as a result of this because we know he's in us he has given given you magnificent promises that are beyond all price so that through everybody notices the power of these tremendous promises we can experience partnership with the divine nature by which you have escaped the corrupt desires that are in the world it is you say how do you get it from here out by faith you begin to receive what the bible says about you this is the real you uh football's coming up super bowl how many of you in here know the arkansas guy his name's keith jackson and uh lula's back here that's that's your cousin correct lula that that's uh that's his cousin keith jackson years ago he he played football for oklahoma he caught a pass in the orange bowl that they beat miami for the championship it really was he didn't play for arkansas i think they didn't like that arkansas didn't like it but he was a great he was a great tight end and so he goes from uh playing he goes into another team but he ends up at green bay and they win the super bowl and so it wasn't much longer after that he retired well i was ministering one day along these lines and the fact that jesus said the words that i speak are spirit and life if i'm going to transform my soul from the hurt and the stuff that i've got to receive of course jesus is in my spirit so i need to begin to speak what jesus says about me not what someone else says about me everybody got that amen yeah hallelujah i know we all do keith jackson came up to me and he said hey terry i want to tell you my testimony i said yeah he said when i i started when i was playing for oklahoma and i took this all the way into my pro career i don't know how many years he played he played four years in college three years in college was drafted and then in the draft i know he played probably for 10 years or more and do y'all know that he walked out and did not have one injury and started from the time he got there and walked out he did never got hurt and buddy those people are there to hurt you and he said you know what the secret was and I said what he said I never walked out on the field until I in my locker room with my pads on and my helmet off he said I opened my Bible and I read Psalms 91 over my life he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty listen to this i will say of the lord he is my refuge he's my fortress my god in whom i trust surely everybody get this he will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence he will cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall i trust his truth shall be my shield and buckler and it goes on with the most incredible and he goes ahead and he said i will never be afraid of terror and listen to this terror by night arrow that flies by day listen to this i will never be afraid of pestilence that walks in darkness psalms 91 and he said this to me he said there were days i got in a hurry and something slipped and i was we were going out on the field and and we're getting ready to start the ball game he said i forgot to read psalms 91 he said i would run back in the locker room and i'd begin to thank the lord no evil comes near me no plague comes near my dwelling i will not be hurt today i thank you father for your protection your angels are covering me that's what the bible says the angels of god are around me and he did his whole career 
and never got hurt. Oh, Pastor Terry, that's just a coincidence. No. That is my spirit, my soul going in here to release what's on the inside of me to impact the world that I live in. That is how we grow up spiritually. Wow. Amen. Let me tell you something, guys. If if Jesus were, if we could just get Jesus right up here on the on the stand, I know we all think, oh my gosh, we'd be all laying on the floor. Yeah, we might be there for a little while, but after a while, he'd say, get up and get up here, man. Touch me, handle me. I love you guys. Everything I did, I did it for you. You are, you are the sons and daughters. Do you know that, yes, he is the son of God, but guess what? We're sons and daughters of God. We, he brought us in to sonship. And, man, I, I used to be afraid that when I, when, I, when I see God, I'll just probably fall and wilt. No, man, it'll be like, it'll be like my, my granddaughter Mercy when she hits the house, man. The first person she goes to is Coco. When she's ready to go to bed, she comes to Pops and crawls up in my chair. Now she's getting so big, she's moved me out of my chair. But it's pops, pops, let's, pops, watch this. And me and her, we were watching stuff. Kim was playing Candyland with her. And, you know, and we were just having the biggest time last night. And you know what? She loves Impact Church, and she can't wait for the Super Bowl part. 